my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important that we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We become conscious of him in all our deeds. We worship him alone for indeed that is the purpose of creation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinnkind except so that they worship me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who worship Allah alone. My brothers and sisters, it is important that we follow the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger whom we are so fortunate to be the followers of, whom we are so fortunate to be chosen to be from amongst his ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can learn the prophetic way and his path, his mannerism, his character, and put it into practice as best as we can. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can learn the methods of worship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and adopt these beautiful methods. My brothers and sisters, this is the day of Eid. It is the most blessed day. It is a day that you could actually say very comfortably that is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us the beautiful gift of the day of Eid. It comes after an entire month of intense worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only did we engage in the fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only did we abstain from that which is otherwise permissible for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from dawn to dusk, but after dusk we actually participated in extra prayers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we earned by the will of Allah the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the month of Ramadan is a month of the Quran it is a month of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a month of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we declare the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran that the prescribed period should be completed and thereafter we should engage in the takbir. So we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, the goodness that we have participated in during this beautiful month of Ramadan, it is very important for us to continue this goodness after the month of Ramadan because the rules and regulations of Islam. The rules and regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us are valid beyond Ramadan in the same way that they are during the month of Ramadan. So I invite yourselves and myself to continue in this beautiful obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depicting that we have changed our lives positively. We have become better people. We will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a better and more correct way. And at the same time, we will reach out to the rest of humanity and mankind in a way taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we need to liven and we need to bring back to life is to fast six days of shawwal as per the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man saama ramadana thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal kana ka siyam al-dahr whoever fasts the entire month of Ramadan and follows it up with six fasts of, Ram of shawwal which is this particular month we are in right now they will have the reward of having fasted the entire year. A quick explanation of that is, if you were to fast the month of Ramadan, a good deed, as you know, is multiplied by 10. So that would be equivalent to having fasted 10 months. And if you were to fast six days of Shawwal, these days do not have to be consecutive. If you fast these days, it will be a reward of 60 days because you multiply each day by 10 as per the multiplication we are taught about or we are taught of. So what would happen is 60 days would equate two months and the other 10 months would equate if you add them together the entire year. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to fast at least the six days of Shawwal and inshallah you will be able to fulfill this great sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and achieve such a great reward. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Brothers and sisters, this is a day of happiness. It is a day of getting together 
families get together, communities get together. We have gotten together today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a day of compassion, a day of mercy, a day of resolving disputes that we may have had, a day of reaching out to others, a day of smiling, a day of charity, a day of goodness. In fact, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something known as zakatul fitr or sadaqatul fitr. We need to realize that that is necessary for us prior to the salah. We should have already delivered this particular sadaqa. It is a charity to be given to the poor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. It is a means of helping them to enjoy this beautiful day. And it is a means of putting a smile on the faces of those who are less privileged. So this goes to show that on a day like this, we are still taught to be charitable. We are still taught to reach out to the less fortunate, to think about those who don't have what we have and to reach out to them. Islam is based on charity. One of the pillars of Islam is to be charitable. If we go through the pillars of Islam very quickly, the first is to declare the Shahada, to believe in it, bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, to fulfill the five daily prayers, thereafter to fast in the month of Ramadan, thereafter to be charitable, and thereafter for those who can afford it, to actually go out for the Hajj. These are the five pillars of Islam, and we ask Allah to make us from those who uphold them and uplift them. So as I said, one of the pillars is to be charitable. My brothers and sisters, recently we have seen attacks on the Muslimin. And you all know that it is something nobody is happy about. We would not like to see attacks on anyone, humankind. And as we know, life in general is absolutely sacred. It is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in the Quran, a person who saves a single life is equivalent to he who has saved entire humanity. And he or she who has caused the death of one person or has killed one person has actually committed a crime such that they have earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that they have harmed or attacked or killed entire humanity. So it's an issue of life being sacred. My brothers and sisters, we have a duty. We have a duty upon our neighbors. We have a duty upon our communities, those whom we live with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to fulfill the rights of our neighbors. We ought to be kind to them. We ought to be good to them. We ought to look after their property and not cause harm to them. We ought to reach out to them. If we were to cook food, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that once in a while you add a little bit more in order to be able to give your neighbors. My brothers and sisters, let's reach out to our neighbors, be they Muslim or not. They are still our neighbors. They are part of the community. They are part of society. We need to reach out to them with the best character and conduct. They will see the goodness of this beautiful faith. And inshallah, they will at least know that Islam is a heavenly faith. Thereafter, guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, it's important that we learn a lesson from what is going on across the globe. At the moment, we are in dire need of turning back to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see people suffering across the globe. We are not happy about it. We would love to see a stop in the fighting and the killing across the globe. A beautiful day of this nature. We pray, we raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him to help us, to help the ummah, to help humanity at large, so that the chaos that is prevalent at the moment can come to an end and it is important for us to reach out as best as we can to those who are struggling and suffering as a result of all the wars and the famine and all the disasters that are occurring across the globe brothers and sisters i encourage you to continue to be charitable for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ma naqasa malun min sadaqa no one's wealth has ever been depleted due to a charity they have given. In fact, a charity that was given has always increased the wealth of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us increase in every form of goodness. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd.
on this beautiful day, we remember many of our family members who have passed on and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them Jannatul Firdaus and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us conscious of death for that is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to consider that we are going to be dying one day, going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafs Oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each one of you should look into what you have prepared to hand over tomorrow. What you have prepared for tomorrow, meaning for the day of judgment. So my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to prepare as best as we can. The good deeds, the acts of worship, the reaching out to one and all in the best possible way. Life is indeed very short. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam says, the lifespan of the members of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years. It's important for us to realize this is a very short period of time. Within in that time, pack away as many good deeds as you can. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, it is also absolutely, absolutely important for us to remind one another to meet our family members and resolve the disputes that we may have within our families on a beautiful day of this nature. Resolve the disputes we may have within our communities on this beautiful day and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a tool of solution rather than problem and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who can reach out to those who are suffering I make mention of the fire that took place here in London a few days back we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those to bless all those and to have mercy on all those who have been affected by this the victims the suffering that perhaps they may be going through right now in terms of locating a place to stay or replacing where they were, we need to reach out to them. For indeed, if you create ease for someone, Allah will create ease for you in this world and the next. If you were to reach out to someone, you will be reached out to. So our hearts go out to those who have been affected by this disastrous fire here in London and inshallah we will do our best to reach out to you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most positive way my brothers and sisters this goes to show that we belong to a community we belong to a society we belong to a nation we belong to an ummah we belong to the humankind and it's important for us to reach out to one another no matter where people are suffering on the globe please feel their suffering and reach out to them with a solution. The minimum we could do is to pray for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all ease. Allahu Akbar, Allahu